Okay, we are recording again, and probably I should have waited until I booted up the game again for this. So it's definitely, judging from that crash lock and judging from the visual glitches accompanying the memory failure there, I have a much better idea of what's happening. Old version of the game. Late in the game. <laughs> Things are less compatible. I was running mods that I cut out, but me cutting out those mods shouldn't make a difference. It, it may make a difference, but I'm fairly sure the uh, Skybox should default to a vanilla Skybox if, if the mod has been uninstalled. I think what the mod does is add Skyboxes to a list. Uh, I don't actually remember how exactly that mod works, but it, it shouldn't cause a crash in whatever case. It, it worst, it should result in what we were seeing visually in the last episode, um, just colored light. That colored light is there in lieu of, normally that colored light sits behind the, the skybox and it colors it or it gives it a certain hue in different nebulas or depending on the star and stuff like that, these stars will eliminate a certain color or spectra of light which will make it look like the star actually has a red giant or a, a red dwarf or a class Y or K or whatever star. But if you take away the skybox, all that's left is the color. So what was happening there, I think, was it just wasn't loading or it wasn't applying properly. Which is real weird, because that's a pretty basic thing that even the mods I had installed don't actively affect. And when we had loaded up the game, like we're seeing now in Soul, it looked fine. So there's a few things to fuck around with. I've been ignoring our planets for a while, so I'm going to take a hot minute to dick around in here. Go ahead and upgrade our engineering. Upgrade our engineering. Science, science, this, that, those. Uh, you can build an additional structure. You can build a number of additional structures. Excellent. Why not give me... How's your food output? 21 over and you are full up. Great. Okay, well this can definitely be committed to doing something more interesting then. Let's start with a trading center for you. Next two can just have power, but do we have... Nope, power plants. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Once this planet is done developing, I will come back in here and mess around with replacing some of these farms. But we'll do that later. We'll do that later when we're not at work. I'll go ahead and unpause, turn the speed up. It's interesting that the, the memory allocation error was related specifically to the music. I, that's fascinating to me. So maybe music is just set at the lowest priority when it comes to memory? So if something has to be cut, it should be that? But that doesn't really seem like it's the case. I don't know. I'm excited, that's that's really interesting. I I like, I very much enjoy the challenge of reading through crash logs and trying to figure out what happened. It, it feels like sleuthing a little bit. So I want another orbital manufacturer here. That's correct. Now our fleets are involved, but I can't remember to what extent how involved. You're headed there. Delightful. You are... Ooh, crashed in me. Oh no, auto saved and crashed immediately. Damn. Okay, that's much more interesting. That was immediate, and if immediate, that's replicable. Uh, documents, paradox, Stellaris, logs, error. Scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, it's 40 after. So the last thing is failed to choose personality type for Nausicaa Sector with ethics, fanatic, xenophile, pacifist. The Starbase Citadel entity has no attach point named Part 7. Country scope contains invalid object at file, common, scripted, triggers, SDH country triggers, .txt, line 203, 205. I'm interested in what those are. So I'm going to I'm gonna copy those and look into those on my own time. Just, just for shits and giggles. Now, it's, it's worth repeating again that this is an older version of the mod, and I am booting the game back up, don't worry, that any skip any errors I might find have probably already been fixed. However, if this is a replicable 
thing happening. If this is repeatable error, then in this time we weren't getting any errors regarding memory or music or any of that. I think that just happened as there was more and more stuff on screen. Yeah. So the problem, uh, in previous videos, I've been opening the crash log and just saying, I'm not seeing anything. It's because my dumbass keeps booting up the game before opening up the crash log. And the problem is, every time you boot up the game, the crash log will refresh and start with the, uh, in descending order. Oh, you started up the game. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. And <laughs> it'll just clear everything from the last time the, the game was open. So if you have the game crash, and you want to figure out what happened, don't fucking open the game. Go look at the crash log first and maybe copy the crash log if you're trying to see if there's a repeating error. And then go open the game. Now, if you have dump files and you can access and read the dump files, like Stars does provide, though for dev benefit more than anything else, then you can do it because the dump files are created every time the game crashes, I think. Yeah, I think it's on a CTD crush this desktop that they're generated, but I, I'm not 100% on that. In whatever case, they're dated and saved individually, so they don't overwrite each other. But in a crash file, you don't really need to go back over it individually. Most of the time, it's used just day of or point of. Okay, if it crashes at the end of the month, this is interesting because it's replicable. It's also frustrating because it's replicable, and I have no idea what it is outside of hold up hold up hold up it, i'm curious what the fuck is the nausican sector called because the game is having a hell of a time with the nausicans yeah okay despicable neutrals yep okay yeah they're having a hard time figuring out what to call the nausica sector interesting very interesting so despicable neutrals if you're not familiar is a is a reference to futurama what makes a species turn neutral? Less for gold, power, were they just born with hearts full of neutrality? Ha ha ha. But this is, yeah, as it says in red text, this is a placeholder personality and should not show up in game. Uh, this used to show up in Stellaris a lot more often than, uh, than it should have. But for some reason, the game can't figure out what fanatic xenophile pacifists government should be. Which is quite odd, given that they should be Federation Sector Federation members because of their relationship with me and them getting incorporated. So I'm not sure what happened there. And the crash log is just inundated with the game checking that. It looks like every month or... It might be every month. The game checking that every single in-game month going, Hey, what's up with this? Hey, what's up with this? Hey, hey, this... This is a weird thing. It, this should have a uh, this should have a different title assigned to it. This should have a different title assigned to it. But it can't figure out what title it wants to assign to it over and over and over. I'm very interested in why it doesn't, but I have no no inkling. If I were a smarter man, I would go back and look. If I cared more. I would go back and look at the video that I recorded when we first incorporated the Noskin sector and see if there's any indication of something going awry there, or something happening in a weird order, or something to that effect, which might lead it on. Yeah, no, that cross, <laughs> that cross, that crash is not replicable, or at least it didn't immediately happen the same month again. Establishing colony. Alright, Tamarian Union, 39%, high intensity again, let's just keep that going. Orbital Manufactory. What do I want you to have? A promenade? That's why I said last time, I believe. Uh, well, I said an Orbital Science Center last time, so actually what I want you to have is a museum. Then you can have a promenade when it comes up next. Are you... you are... What you should be. Yeah, you are bombing that planet. Delightful. Wheat, why don't you go on up to Masaro? And we're gonna have to assign a couple of armies to the Masaro system. You go there. 
you go there. Thank you. I don't believe that I have anyone headed to Cartella, so let's get... I believe I should only need one to take the Cartella system. I do. Well, provided that it isn't very strong. How's the garrison? Oh yeah, weak. Very weak. So that should be able to topple that, no problem. The Selenia system looks like it should need a little encouragement down here in Nysel. So let's go ahead and grab this last idle army, the Chytraconis army. And assign you all the way up here. Wonderful. You're blowing that up, which is just great. The rest of this is fine. Have we moved in to engage here? No, we are en route in the battles system. Appropriate. You're idling. You're idling. Could I move in to engage? Well, possibly. I'm going to right-click on Mania, but really what I'm interested in is intercepting Initiate Autonomous Fleet 001, regardless of where it is. Yeah, okay, that's an agreement I could go for. Yes, you. Is it headed for Mania? Yes. Money, 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 money! <laughs> Here, right click on this, you'll hunt that down by your own devices. This is getting bombed to heck and back 1500, god damn! This is the wrong fleet to have in orbit. What? Didn't I? I signed Titan Army, yeah, to get here. They're gonna be here in about a year. Okay, well, wait. This is Mondragon, is looking occupied. Occupable, ocu, occupiable. It's not a word. That's not. It's not how you say that. It's looking like we can occupy that planet now. I believe these are all good. Mine, 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 mine. Neutral, actually. But yeah. Speaking of neutral, somebody get me that. One hundred twenty-three. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Never mind. Not worth it. That's for the Devor Imperium to get, or we'll get it much, much later, but 123 is not worth that. Alright, so when he has cleared out, start bombing the planet in the system. How's the war score looking? We're at 10% and 0%. No war exhaustion. We haven't lost any troops in ground battles or space battles. No, that's not true. We've lost one in a ground battle. Yeah, but 0% because it's a fraction. The amount we gain in war exhaustion is that as a fraction of our total army size, I think. That's my working understanding of how that works. Whereas they've lost 0% due to 68 armies lost, so maybe not. Maybe... Defenders don't get that as tough. Space battles, 10% due to 9 ships lost. I wonder how this is calculated, because it can't possibly be as a, as a fraction of how many ships they actually have. Can it? Hmm. And if it is built and based off of number of armies lost, that makes strategies like Corvette spam, which is still popular in some circles of the Stellaris community, suboptimal because Corvette spam makes you lose a lot of ships, but your ships are so cheap that you can replace them without much concern or thought. But if it contributes to your war exhaustion, then it might give a player pause before doing that. Alternatively, if it is just based off of numbers, that can't be good because, well, you don't just want it to be based off of numbers, you want it to be based off of the cost of the ships and the lives or manpower or resources or whatever lost in that ship. Ooh, Promethium class. Promethium heavy escort class. Oh shit game, you gonna give me a better heavy escort? You shouldn't have. The Prometheus class starship uses a unique multi-vector assault mode. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember this. Multi-vector assault mode uses advanced compartmentalization and automation systems to split these ships into three separate warp-capable craft, which work together to surround and quickly eliminate enemy ships. This was a choice by the design team because it looked cool, but I really... The ships in Star Trek that split into two ships. Why? 
Why? It's just have two ships or three ships just fly in formation. It more than anything, it's just it's silly. It's silly, and it's it's kind of cool in a Voltron kind of way, but nah, nah, it does not stand up. You just got Scout. Sub white speed plus 25%, sub white speed plus 20%, plus 45%. Yeah. You'll give me credits and minerals for Iridium. Nah. I don't even want the Iridium that badly, I just don't want what they're offering either. What do we pop down here? Orphan Museum? Ah, now! The promenade? Promenade. Hmm. Trade Depot. And then Promenade, probably, but we'll go ahead and hit the upgrade button just to keep this moving along. <laughs> Orbital Science Museum? Yeah, you're doing fine. This is all doing A? Okay. How's this invasion going? Delightful. And this is their capital. Their new capital. Anyway. Hostile fleet. Autonomous fleet 002 is moving in to attack something here. Can I move into... Yeah, can I... Go attack that. And then go hunt down 001. 002 is smaller and will be worth less, but... Just worth something. These are occupied. We have armies en route. We have armies en route here. Really, the only potentially occupied system we're not moving en route to is the Prey War system. We might not need to occupy that. We're going to need to occupy that. <laughs> I, I immediately talked myself out of my optimism there. Like, maybe we won't have to. We're going to have to do it. I, I know this game better than that. Um, I'm close enough that I can probably take a look at how big their garrison is. If it's less than a thousand, it is way less than a thousand. Then I will be delight with... Delight with... Delighted. Delight led. To... Move the Aedas Apprentice army up here. To take care of that. The Titan army will take care of whatever is in the bear system. As slow as it might be. And that's looking like the Prey War... Fleets, Autonomous Fleet 001 and 002 are the last two, well I say that and then they just built a new one, the, the last significant fleets to be aware of out here. Oh, we've beaten our first point of war exhaustion from ground battles from losing eight armies lost. They're still just losing primarily due to space battles. All right. Yeah, not much I can do besides wait. Well, the Prasad system here actually looks like it could be liberated, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, an interesting thing with the... Uh, I thought that if... If a ideology war goal were... Well, this seems related to an event. We're timed out due to a due to war exhaustion. Occupied territories would be turned into a separate empire with the ide ideology you want. Shuttle crashed on Troyes during a clandestine mission on the surface of Troyes. One of the shuttles was one of our shuttles was intercepted by a squadron of atmospheric fighters belonging to a local nation state. A looking missile hit disabled the shuttle's engine. Are we on passive? What do you mean? Shuttles. Safe distance and every effort is made to avoid cultural contamination. A lucky missile hit the disabled shuttle's engines and it crashed into remote wilderness region. We need to act fast if we're to evacuate any survivors before the natives reach the crash site. All evidence of our presence must be removed. So we get mission to remove shuttle survivors. We have two years to do it. What we need is a signed ship in orbit. We are in the wrong neighborhood for that, so Talon has an occupied world, right? Yeah, Talon 4. So Talon 4, we're going to go in here, we're going to give you a science ship. 60 days, that'll be done. I'll assign an experienced scientist to that and put them to task. Unless, of course... Oh, well, actually, we can have more leaders now. Of course, recruiting a new leader won't make much of a difference, given that 
They won't be level 3. Yeah, we can have Data do it. Yeah. Ooh, X, level 10. That's a rare sight. Skill level 10 gives a bonus of 20% pop resource production, which is absurd. 20% building build speed, 20% clear blocker time. That's quite good, actually. Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy about that. Indeed. Prelori we're fucking up, right? Yeah, you're going here and then you're going to... Ah, Prelora. What a name. Um, um. Yes, yeah, is a service to the mod authors. I probably, since the first crash that we had, have been, <laughs> when the game crash is going, all right, here's what the crash file says. We're just including it in this video, but I'm, I'm fairly sure the problems we're running into are just a result of running. Uh, problem number one, this many stars in a Stellaris game is something Stellaris isn't super happy about. It starts chugging. Number two, we're running, we started on an older version of not just the mod, but of Stellaris, and we are continuing to play. Though, the patches haven't been significant th since then, so compatibility shouldn't be too much of an effort. Three is how often we've saved over these old saves over and over, uh, particularly with older games, so probably not so much with Stellaris. That can lead to some problems with uh, the save loading properly, to overwriting the same thing over and over and over, but technology's gotten a lot better about that, so it's very unlikely it's that. It could be that the other mods we were running also brought up some compatibility issues, but mm, doubt it. So, and the the last the last potential uh, tent pole, if you will, holding this uh, magnificent structure of failure together. The game is not the structure of failure. The crash in this hyperbolic example is the failure is uh hardware problems on my end potential hardware problems i think my hardware is running fine but dog you can never tell the difference between a good day and a bad day is really when something fails unless you're paying very close attention with that which truthfully i'm not ain't nobody got time for that ain't most people got time for that anyway all right so now the slow period is set in, we are just waiting on our armies. And again, I reiterate the point, mod authors, if you could be, if you could make it so that shuttles, by that I mean army shuttles, auto upgrade to use the engine, not the last one researched, but the one with the best warp speed, you would be gods. Or, if instead, you allowed for us to once again edit that in the ship designer, I would very much appreciate it. I thought it was a little gratuitous when we used to be able to do that. But, right now, my ships are using an engine they shouldn't be using, because although it's newer, it is not better. Which is a rare event, I'll grant you that. Well, at least it should be a rare event, or at least uncommon but but still it can it can be frustrating having super badass technology that your ships just don't use because well yeah we can cross the universe in a number of years instead of decades but pff, that's old tech old man we're gonna use new cutting edge garbage and it, it make me a sad alex ah sherman's planet so this is a size 24 planet I can tell because I counted the tiles. <laughs> this size 24 planet is great. I need to let go of one of our planets in order to properly utilize it. Functionally utilize it, maybe. We have a size 23. I think, however, our smallest was a size 21. That may no longer be the case and is worth investigating. Let's see here. Size 23. 24, 23, 23, 
24, 25, 24, 23, 22. Nope. Satisfying so 2, so 86 Gamma Iridani Prime, and therefore the entire Iridani system, are now beyond my reach. You go to the Lambda Serpentis Prime system. As Christ needs, God bless us, everyone. They're gonna clear the tiles, but really, I just want to wait for population to grow up before I start building any buildings there. So that'll be hunky dory. Ah, no, this didn't die. Here it appears again. Where the fuck is this going? Attacking Starbase. Attacking Starbase. Where? Uh, hello? <laughs> Baby, what is you doing? I can't go through Kobali Republic space. You might just be cutting all the way down here. Ah, it's possible. Yeah, let's let's try to go around and meet them. Long Kojo Deo has been elected as Prime Minister of the United Federation of Planets. Kojo is... Ah, he was a former scientist, I believe. He's now a recruiter, which doesn't do us much good, and oh, thank god, a patrol frigate bonus. Lordy lordy, what a wonderful bonus to give me in the late game. More patrol frigates. Really? Well, the Titan army has at least arrived in the bear system. Let's go ahead and plop that down. This shouldn't get too much easier to invade. It's 1.3k instead of a one point. Five, I think it started out as, but we should still suffer some pretty significant losses. We don't outrank them two to one, which is generally what you want to do when you're getting into a combat situation in this game, or really any other game. Two to one ratio is... I, I, fuck, I think the Art of War talks about this. If you outnumber them two to one, divide your army in half and attack them from multiple sides, and etc, etc. Generally, you want to... You want to have numbers, which isn't a groundbreaking thing to say but not only do you want numbers but you want to use those numbers in an effective way and yeah i'm seeing there really aren't that many tidally locked planets or rogue planets it would be a little shitty to start out as a species with habitability of only rogue planets i suppose that's where terraforming comes in by that i mean that's entirely the point of terraforming, and that is absolutely where it comes in. Are you moving on to Selenia? You aren't, but maybe you should because you're closer? Maybe you aren't actually closer, but whatever. Move in anyway. No, you're definitely closer. And Selenia 3 is not actually where you need to go. You need to go to Nysel. Nysel doesn't look like... Oh no, it is being bombed. Never mind. You are in Tarkania. You're moving into... You're attacking Starbase. This does not, does not help me very much. There are many Starbases of which you could be attacking. Yeah, you're going down to Ziff, definitely. I think they're going into Kelashe, maybe Theorem? That's a weird way to go all the way down here rather than cut in over here. Ah. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever boats your float. How's this going? Three to one. Yeah, we will definitely be winning there. Pray war. We are probably about a year out. Oof. 430 days out. Shot. <laughs> Shot. Dang, yo. Alright, we can get happiness of all pops increased by 5%. That's pretty good. Or consumer goods reduced. Ah, no. Uh, let's let's make more happy. Happiness is a pretty mushy, loose, not really too clear system how exactly it works. At least the game doesn't communicate super well what happiness does. But happiness gives bonuses. If if we look at this Noskin, happiness 
satisfaction, happiness, unhappy pops are da da da. Max happiness is limited by habitability of the planet. Happiness, as I understand it, gives a bonus, or at least it used to, gives a bonus to the production on that tile. Here, happiness is giving a 20% bonus because you're 100% happy. If we take this, which is closer to 50% happiness, we are getting no bonus at all. So happy pops are much better to have around to be researching things or building things or whatever because of that happiness bonus. So happiness matters, but they're also restricted by the faction happiness and planet habitability and lots of other things. All right, we've rescued our operatives on Troyes. Data is now an expert in statecraft. Operatives from the USS Armstrong managed to evacuate several survivors from the crash shuttle on Troyes. The remaining debris was destroyed in a controlled explosion, leaving nothing but a small crater for the natives to find. The nation state where this incident occurred will no doubt blame its neighbors for this border violation, but the disruption to their natural development should hopefully prove minimal. Excellent. Well, I can say bye bye Armstrong. Data can be reassigned to the Walter Raleigh. Yeah. Affirmative. And Ada Serpentis Prime assisting research. Even though Ada Serpentis Prime is not mine anymore, so I might want to reassign those scientists at some point. Not right now, mind you, but yeah, we'll reassign them eventually. Those are looking fine. Our Navy is doing fine. Good in this occupation. The. Pray we're auxiliary, I'm interested in cutting them off just to save mop-up work down here, but we may not <laughs> we may not have that luck. We may have to go mop up regardless. It's probably been about long enough that our new planet is just about done wrapping up its construction or its clearing of tiles. No, not at all. I am completely wrong. Holy shit, you had a lot of tiles to clear out. Never mind. Uh, one thing I can do is land clearance. This is a size 24 planet, and boom, we made it a size 25 planet. I kind of want to go through in other size 24s, bump up to a size 25, size 23s, I could bump up to be a size 24, but that's not a, not a huge difference. And it's worth remembering that we do we want to hold on to some influence in order to incorporate the, um, oh my god, I forgot their name, Talarians? Tamarians. Yeah. Potato, potato. The Tamarian Union, Tamarian Union, a little bit easier. Can I get any science or unity output? I could build a police station or something like that, but that's not really what I'm interested in doing. High-rise complex. No, not really, so let's just plop down power plant. Yep. Mega me power. Ah, and we get a bonus to energy credits on this young world anyway, so fantastic. Serendipitous. Sherman's planet, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to do here. We'll just ignore that for the time being. Lots of colony ships going out. Now, we are going to start hitting a wall when it comes to total number of colonies. <laughs> Hallelujah for that because we have too many fucking planets. Omega facilities done and it's really cool. Chroniton Power Core. Are you for ships? Hmm. This might be a component for star bases. Well, all the same, it's rare and it looks cool. Harnessing the power of some atomic particles with temporal properties known as chronotons has enabled our reactors to draw energy from space-time itself. This new type of reactor nears the pinnacle of energy generation itself. It, that last itself is a little redundant. So I believe this goes on our star bases. If it goes on our ships, I'll be ecstatic, but I'm fairly sure that it doesn't. If it'd be, it'd be bittersweet, more sweet than bitter, really, if the game held out on us for so long for better ship engines, or better ship power generation, and then just like, oh, you want an upgrade? Here's an upgrade. You want another one? Here's another one, and another one, and another one. I'd be okay with it just loading us up with excellent upgrades. 
is the ablative generator really that much better than covariant shields? Covariant shields have a daily regen of 6.7. Yeah, okay, your daily regen's about half. Total number of armor is significantly higher, and armor tends to be a little bit harder to pierce than shields, though not significantly. Honestly, a good balance between the two would probably be better, but yeah, Defiance looking fine. In almost a year, we'll have the Prometheus class, and that will be a pretty interesting moment to see if I'm going to have to rework our heavy escorts one more time, because yeah, we're going to have to take the long way around. Great. Oh, thank God I started sending this to the right neighborhood. Technology discovered. Empathic unity. Monthly unity output is increased. We can get academic privilege. Unity. Or er, living standard. Academic privilege. Interesting. Uh, I want it more than habitability. Yep, and it's purple, so let's get with it. Proposal for a central library to hold the total cultural history and scientific knowledge of all planetary members and academic research is one that could bear fruit. Now, this is interesting. It sounds to me as if this is something that could give us more s science output at the cost of prosperity. And if that's a thing, I'm interested. I will... I buy in. <laughs> I will be happy to explore the idea of making more unity or making more prosperity in order to make more science because lord knows i'm desperate to find new ways to make more science so the doci and the noskins are both very strong yep so it doesn't matter who's exploiting minerals here so long as it's one of you just in that spirit it's just Move you here so I don't forget that, yes, they are good at making minerals and they should be only doing that. The Temerian Unity is this please about, um, yeah, they're xenophobes, we're xenophiles. I hear you, I hear you, and our influence isn't high enough. Normally, a problem. Oh god, do we have a doctor? No, we don't have a doctor. This is not the easiest way to interact with this game, but by God, I will cheese it. I will cheese it. Give me a doctor. Give me a doctor. Give me a doctor. So I can get the doctor to the Interspecies Medical Exchange Program, and in exchange they'll give us influence and everyone will be happy. We're no longer getting influence from those Wesley Crusher-inspired events. Which is a shame because those are nice events as we are not surveying anything anymore as we integrate more and more of our protectorates we also lose is that a doctor damn you fooled me we're losing out on more and more of our influence income because of that and because we have been at war our factions who are pacifistic in nature meaning our faction that is a pacifist faction is mildly displeased with us. Alright, we will go down to the Interspecies Medical Exchange. Communicate with them. Loan a doctor to the IME. Transfer Niv. Nen. Nenvan. Nenvan. Goodbye. Hello. Fund education programs. So the Tamarian Unity should now be fanatic xenophiles. They're at least xenophiles. They're pacifi the pacifist. Pacifistic xenophile spiritualists um i like one of those more than i like the other spiritualists i'm not crazy about but whatever we've had spiritualists in our country before and they've slowly indoctrinated speaking of how are our factions looking happiness zero 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 take that a second to pop in doctors without borders love us I'd love to get this higher, but recent enlightenment. Ah, you would like a recent enlightenment to be happier. You're already pretty damn happy. So we're freedom movement are fairly happy. The Earth Mining Consortium are pissed because we're in an aggressive war. Black company. I'm surprised that you're as popular as you are. Well, I suppose we have incorporated a lot of former xenophobes and militarists, so not that big of a not that big of a surprise. So we have prey war occupied. How are armies doing? Are we in the neighborhood now? Can we start locking this down? 
Alright, Masaru looks about ready. Well, half of Masaru looks about ready. Before I do this, let's, let's recruit a general. We don't need a general, but, well, you might as well. 10% damage, or 5% damage, 10% morale. Hmm. It's a Paul. Great name. I'm gonna go with the damage. <laughs> Truthfully. Uh, we already get a morale bonus, and while it would stand to reason that it would benefit us to further reinforce that, meh, is my well-constructed and thought-out response to that straw man suggestion. Nysel is really occupied. Oh yeah, no, it's a pushover. Man. So those should fall. Cartella. What's going on here? I'm just gonna click land before even looking. Yeah, I believe in you. There are no armies left. And it should be fine. Should be. I think you can manage attacking no armies. This is still en route. Once arriving in system, it should be able to land with minimal opposition. <laughs> Very minimal opposition. Silas, you are 171 days out, so we are at best about a year from being able to wrap up this campaign. Occupation is really what's going to be the, the deal here. We're going to have to fully occupy everything they have. Fortunately, we've been able to reach a point where they are not at war with the Borg. They are not at war with the Kavali, so we should, and so far have, been able to occupy all of their systems without opposition. This is Bodwar. I should make a move on that. Uh, here. Go, go to the Muhammad system. 109 days. Nope. Timely. They are moving to the system, right? Are they sitting in the... No, they're just slow. Okay, good. Colony conquered. Colony conquered, Colony conquered, Nysel, Devonian, Divinon. Divinon have all fallen. We are at 77% occupation. So, Praelor needs to fall. Selenia needs to fall. Muhammad needs to crash. <sighs> Let's check the air file to see what happened. Could not find color for character. Could not find coloring for character. And then there's just a blank. And that happened about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times per second in the last second. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen times per second in the preceding. 10 seconds um we're still getting errors about failing to find personality for the nausicaa sector which is spamming this up a lot a generic starbase citadel entity has no attach point part two three four five six seven two three four five six seven that's interesting uh still seeing the country triggers problem yeah okay so could not find coloring for character. Wow, actually, no, you did that for more than 10 seconds. You did that for 10, 20, Jesus, 30. How many minutes did you do this for, game? Oh, you poor baby. Oh, wow, for, uh, from 1.13.23 until... I'm scrolling down. 1.14.35. Bitmap font dot CPP colon 2827. Could not find coloring for character. Interesting. You were having some very weird glitches here, Stellaris. Very weird. But, but there's no camel, or <laughs> there's no camel that broke the straw's back. There's no straw that broke the camel's back in that, in that log, which is interesting. Normally, Stellaris is a pretty durable creature uh, of a software program. Even when scripts don't work or don't 
agree on what they should do if they try to counteract each other if they try to do two opposite things at the same time they still generally work fairly well it's it's very odd to see a crash log of like yep just stop working with no i'm seeing a lot of repeating errors but they're very minor errors it could just be that there are a lot of repeating minor errors and enough of those repeating enough times will just cause a system failure or a game failure. But that's interesting. All the same, we're not getting hung up on the same month as we were at the beginning, so that's forgivable. I'm not enthusiastic about it, mind you. I am looking forward to the wonderful, wonderful day when the next version of the mod comes out when it may have come out already. Let me not be wrong about that. Star Trek New Horizons. I'm looking forward to the new version of the mod coming out on Steam because there's some interesting new features being suggested and hinted at. Yeah, last update was June 21st. Not today. I'm probably going to do a reboot of the series by then and hopefully by then we'll be able to get in a de facto war with the Borg and really if I can beat the Borg up I'll consider this a win. Uh, when I started this campaign I was talking about oh, I just want to go in and take over everything because we're just gonna paint this map blue and take our sweet time. Well, turns out the game doesn't want to have us take our sweet time. The game wants to be crotchety and bitter and start getting senile in its old age and folding in on itself in weird, uncomfortable ways. It's a shame. Alright, Colony Conquered, ISIL has fallen here at the end of the month. We should get an autosave and not a crash. If we get a crash, then this is a repeating problem. And if it's a repeating problem, it's not due to me, because what I'm doing is different than what we were doing last time. It's due to the AI insistently trying to do something over and over, and that might be some of the crash log that we're seeing. Nope. I'm gonna... Now promenade? Now promenade, yeah, and then upgrade. You're looking dope. You're looking dope. Fantastic. Let's see what you are offering. Energy credits for research agreement. Yeah, sure, you got it. Lots of bureaucracy. So we have a couple. That's not right. They shouldn't have given me active volcanoes. Ah, okay. Sprawling slums on Proto Vorta. They look like Vorta. This isn't directly under. No, 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 it's in the sector. I was gonna say, this is horribly managed. Is this my fault? Partially, yes, but primarily no. All right, Prey War Fleet 001. Why the fuck you decided to attack? It came all the way down here to attack a 13k strength starbase. It... <laughs> the AI decided, ah oh, yeah, we need to go attack something. Let's not go over here to this unfortified region of space. Let's go all the way down here and attack something that can beat our fleet by itself weird. Real weird. Suicidal AI behavior. Oh, boom. It's gone now. Up to 3 and 13%. Mohammed. This is the Mohammed needs to capitulate. We are moving to the Prey War system. That, that is in a timeline game. Alright, fair enough. Go ahead and click on land armies. I would love to assign Metis here to lead the army. Make it fall a little bit faster. Our occupation score is now at 84%. Only 84%? Really? What in the fuck game am I not occupying here? <laughs> I'm occupying this. I'm moving to Mohammed. I have this, this, that, that, this, that, 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 that. This, 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 this. All those. We have these. Yes. Hmm. Maybe it'll just jump up to 
but I have eight of nine worlds occupied, eight ninths, uh, I want to say that's 84%, but whatever, that's, that's close enough. Well, I suppose that's not just including planets, eh? Yeah, that's also including star bases. Bum, 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 bum. Now, recording tonight, we only have about 10 minutes left. In that 10 minutes, I'd love to wrap up this war, have it be a one-day event, move on to doing something else tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I'd very much like to start laying in the groundwork for our war against the Borg. I know, depending on how much I play tomorrow, I am working 6 to midnight tomorrow, so I may not be back on for our normal time. I may be streaming early afternoon instead and recording in the early afternoon instead. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see how it goes. I'll do the usual bit of posting on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and... Somewhere else? I post somewhere else. I don't remember where else I post. I, I should really set up a macro that just auto posts every time I go live. I'll post when I'm going live. And if you miss it, it's really not a big deal because it's going up to YouTube anyway. And truth be told, unless there's highly interactable content when I'm watching Let's Plays or streams or after action reports or whatever, I tend to prefer to watch them as VODs or video on demands or you know, after the fact, because that lets you pause and run into the other room or have a conversation with someone else instead of being like, no, I gotta pay close attention to this one thing because I might miss something. If I do, it's gone forever. All right, so you should be at 100. What the fuck are you talking about, 93%? Game, you are killing me here. All right, the Prey Lord do not have another system. They don't. The hold on. Right? Yeah, no one in this war. We have Muhammad, we have Selenia, we have this, this, that, that, this, that, 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 this. Are there any planets we haven't taken? Did I overlook something maybe? Is this just a weird glitch where the game thinks that there are more planets than there actually- I didn't take Marchand! Ah, uh, Blind boy. Ah, oh, but I have a fleet in orbit. Hell yeah, go land there. What is their army looking like? Uh, sizable, but... It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Deploying liberation forces. Hell yeah. Liberating the fuck out of these people with lasers and torpedoes and massive systemic overtures. Overtures is not the right word. Uh, over. Upheaval. There we go. Upheaval was the word I wanted. I didn't even get that even close to being right. Uh, research agreement? Yeah, sure. Why not? Prometheus class, hold the phone. This is interesting to me. We have like eight minutes left, so I have enough time to look into this. Any of these techs are cheaper. Yeah, they're cheaper. Multi-phasic planetary shield is interesting, but I'm not using them anyway. Refractive stealth hull is interesting. I would actually use this potentially on our heavy escorts, so this is tempting to go down. So I'll go ahead and do that. Elite fighters is cool and is probably more exciting, but let's go down something I'll actually use. Tell me, Heavy Escort Defiant class, the Prometheus class ugh, has three heavies and three torpedoes, but it's so much more expensive. Why? Why the subatomic temporal disruptors are pretty dope. <laughs> I, 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 um, yeah, okay, let's get this out and do a comparative analysis between the two because this may actually be better uh armor damage armor damage transphasic torpedoes okay uh gravimetric maelstrom torpedoes have a average damage of 17.26 damage per second that's assuming that they hit and a bonus of 100 percent armor damage whereas medium transphasic torpedoes have an average damage of 18.4 
per second, which is higher. Um, shield penetration, less shield damage, 75% armor penetration. So it's not armor damage, but it just penetrates the armor completely and deals whole damage directly. If we are talking about the Borg who stack armor on armor on armor, armor penetration is hugely important. And we don't have anything in our phaser repertoire that pierces armor. No, that's okay. Uh, the rest of this is looking pretty okay. I'm, I'm seeing this number and realizing, oh god, maybe we can't afford this. <laughs> By that I mean almost certainly we're going to have to kit this out differently. So we have thermionic reactors out the wazoo here. Jesus, I have to pretty much kit them all out with thermionic reactors to be able to use these. Wow, 394 power each. These are not fucking around. Uh, I'm not going to call this the Defiant. I will call this the Prometheus. Because this is a very different class. I want to compare this to the Defiant. And before I do that, I'm going to go in. Transphasic torpedoes use more power. Damn. But I really like them a lot more than Gravimetric Maelstrom torpedoes. Can't get anything better out of that. Subatomic Temporal Disruptors already give us 125% armor damage, which is great. What this means to me is that we're probably going to have to make a cut right here and put in thermionic reactors instead. Not crazy excited about it. Well, actually, maybe I don't. No, I definitely do. Uh, thermionic reactors. And we're still using armor, even though we could technically go back to shields because the Borg cut through shields better than they cut through armor. So we'll save this as the Defiant, new model of the Defiant, and we'll just do clicking back and forth. So cost... I don't care about. We make 2.3k per month, and that's when things are dialed down. I can dial things up from there. Same hull, same armor. The Defiant is more dodgy. The Prometheus hits harder. The Prometheus's upkeep is significantly higher, but the damage is also notably higher. The damage on this is. 100% shield damage, 100% armor damage, minus 25% hull damage, and medium transphasic torpedoes are actually shared. So it's a difference between do I want 100% shield damage and armor damage dealing 19.14 per second, so let's call that 20, and just round that to 80 per second at 100 and 125. Comparatively, and I'm just writing off the light modulated phasers, a rounding error basically in this comparison so this is 35 35 35 so that's 35 35 70 plus one more that's 105 potential damage per second now that's assuming that they hit and that is a big if they do need to hit in order to deal damage um 100 shield damage 100 uh armor damage now interestingly enough 100 armor damage per second it's fine, we can just kind of ignore the 100-100, but that still means that the 80 per second gets a plus 25% bonus. 25% of 80 is, what, a quarter of 80 is 20, right? Yeah, 20, 40, 60, 80, yeah. So, plus 20, that comes out to about, with regards to damage to armor, 100 per second. So our Defiant isn't that far behind in average damage per second it might actually come out ahead. Now this has minus 25 hull damage, whereas the subatomic temporal disruptors do not. So this might be doing more overall damage per shot, but the Defiant per second is dealing effectively the same damage, more or less. The Defiant also has this wonderful white modulated phaser mark IV, which is really doing a ton of work here. And that's really the, the main difference, huh? Wow, huh, whole breacher phasers, none of these do more to armor. I mean, I'll set it on this, but I, I definitely think the Defiance are the way to go. I, uh, I'll probably experiment by retrofitting um, maybe half of our fleets into Prometheus fleets and doing a comparative analysis in uh, kill-to-death ratios between whether the Prometheuses or the Defiance fight better but then again we also have fleets of perfectly 
wonderful defiance, and it seems like it'd be a shame to waste them. So, maybe not. One thing I could do on the Heavy Escort, we are currently employing the Science Console in here, just to try to get a tiny, tiny bit more evasion. If we are going all out, and the point of this is just damage, I can switch out the Science Console for either the Dervish device, which increases weapon damage by an additional 20%, which is fucking noteworthy and crazy, uh, or give it a better chance to hit with the Precog Chamber, give it a 10% chance to hit, or, or a plus 10 to hit, Marine Detachment, nah, Humanitarian Aid, nah, Temporal Spitfire gives a fire rate increase of 18%, we can't afford that, Dervish Device I think is the only thing we can afford in here. Uh, weapon damage plus 20%, so it would make these hit harder, and it isn't calculated in here, unfortunately. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm uncomfortable about that, because the entire point of this as a weapons platform is that it has high dodge, and if we aren't, or evasion, and if we aren't boosting up that evasion, then we're, we're letting this down a little bit. Um... Yeah, let's compare the cooldown and accuracy and tracking of these. They have a range of 50, these have a range of 30. So the Prometheus would hit first, that means overall it'll do more damage. The Defiant has an accuracy of 75%, the Prometheus has an accuracy of 85%. So even though it has less guns, they will hit more often. These have a tracking of 10%, whereas these have a tracking of 0%. So even if they miss, the Prometheus ships have a 10% chance to still hit. If the Defiant misses, it will not hit. A uh, yeah. Hmm. I guess it depends on the buildup of their fleet as well. If they have smaller vessels, I'd like the Defiant because I'm more guns. If they have bigger vessels, Prometheus, it would probably be well suited to get a mixture of both. I'm not committing to either right now, but it's interesting. I'm gonna hold off to wrapping up this episode until we take Marchand down here. Which we are oof, painfully doing. This is what happens when you dump bombard at the same time that you land troops. You lose way more than you should. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll go and reinforce these armies after the war anyhow. And after the war, looking at the casualties we've suffered, we can do a comparative analysis if I think the artillery are more worth it, or if I should have just gone in with more deep strike fours. Now, an interesting thing on these planets is each planet, let's see if we can catch it before it goes away, has a combat width, depending on the size of the planet. So if we get more armies, it does not necessarily mean that we will do better. So in that respect, getting the mobile energy artilleries, which are effectively just much more expensive deep strike commandos for, in terms of they do more damage, more collateral damage, but they have the exact same health and morale, it may be worth it to just make armies entirely out of energy artillery at this point. Because we have the money and we have the time, and the upkeep would be significant, but who gives a fuck? I mean, I probably should, because I'm footing the bill and trying to maintain these <laughs> numbers. Yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. That's very easy to do. We are rowing in it. Absolutely rowing in it. Uh, you are building something, yep, and then you'll pop down a promenade. You have a promenade going along? Yeah, that's cool. Colony conquered. That should have them at 100%. Hell yeah, victory against the Vodwar a supremacy. Our assumptions about human weakness may have been hasty. As a token of our new experience, we accept your demands. The best possible outcome. They are now a moral democracy. They're still slaving despots, which will change. They're egalitarian, xenophile, pacifist. Best possible outcome. Pause the game. Hey. Oh, come on. Alright, hostile attitude. This needs to recalculate at the end of the month. This is the entire reason I went to war for for them. For them, with them, with them, for them. Was to change hearts and minds, specifically about their opinions of the Federation. You become our protectorate, you get a migration treaty, migratory treaty. I was talking about building up their debt. 
wasn't I talking about building a star base in here and using it as a oh my god I totally was um I was talking about instead of putting down trade depots putting down more um shipyards up here well I didn't so instead everybody go all the way back to earth we're, we're way too heavily centralized. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're gonna right click. Actually, right click. Yeah, enter orbit. Can I just hit? Yeah. I can't tab through these, can I? No, it would make me happy if I could. Alright, you return home. I don't. Tab was doing some weird stuff there. You return fleets home. You return home. You return home. I'm not gonna pull the armies back if they aren't depleted. If they are depleted, like Sevilla Army 2 here, I will retreat them back to, in this case, Sevilla, to refit and rearm. But I'm pretty satisfied with the performance that we've seen here. I don't think they would fare so well against Borg, but no, you never know. The rest of our armies, I'll just pull back to... Well, I don't even really need to pull them back to our space, do I? Because this is our protectorate now, so technically it's our space. Technically is not the right word. Legally, there's an argument to be made for this being our space. Yeah, you're in the right area. You're good. You're good. You're good. What the fuck are you doing all the way down here? You just never got sent in. Well, you can move up to Samuelson. Titan army isn't bare. Yeah, okay. I'm... I'm gonna let autosave save at the end of the month because the game has rarely crashed when autosaving, but it has much more frequently crashed when I hit the exit button. The Vodwar have become our protectorate. We've accepted a migration treaty. United Federation of... Why are we brown? No! What gives? <laughs> You're reading me, what did you do? Alright, our federation is brown for some reason. Again, I thought we were thought we were over this after annexing the Bajorans, but uh, I came back. Hit saving game. Delightful pause game. Hit the exit button. Click the save button. And it didn't crash. God, that is a good feeling. Alright, save you. Go in here and load this my dude too. Save, because it's always good to have a backup. Thanks for hanging out. That's going to be it for tonight. I know it's relatively short, but I've been out all night. And I would like to hang out with my partner at some point before we're both asleep. I will be working tomorrow night, but I'll try to stream at some point anyway. If you're watching this on YouTube, stop by again tomorrow. There'll be more up. Make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe, all that silly shenanigans. In the meantime, toodaloo, take care. I'll see you later. Have a great night. Bye-bye.